What's going on everyone? It is Joe DeLoneware and in today's video I'm going to go over my 2022 fall oversee process. So let's get started. So it's Labor Day here in New Jersey. I actually threw down on September 3rd, Saturday, September 3rd. Really great process, uh, a lot of work. It was hot, it was humid. Um, but I got everything down. We are going to be getting a storms coming through, so I'm hopefully I don't get a ton of washout. Uh, I wanted to get this stuff down before I knew this storm was coming, but I wanted to get it down. Um, hopefully by tomorrow, I will start to see some sort of germination. Last year, I was seeing germination on day four. Um, mo I would believe I believe it was about day four last year was when I saw germination. As you guys know, I threw down the Mountain View seed that I got at Tuckahoe Turf Farms. It's a 90-10 blend, 90% tall fescue, 10% Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, I saw really great results last year. That's one of the initial reasons why I wanted to do it this year. Uh, there was definitely some patches in my lawn that uh, needed help, uh, especially this year for the fall overseed. But overall, I would say that it did very well. Um, again, I got late to the fungus game lift this year, the fungus pre uh, prevention. So next year, I'm going to have a game plan for that and, you know, get that stuff down when I'm supposed to. So I'm not having a couple struggle areas like I am now. I just want to go over my process with you guys today. Just want to document what I did this year. So next year, if there's anything I need to tweak or come back to, I'll have this video to take a look at and you guys can take a look at this video as well. So before I did throw down my seed this year, there are two steps that I actually did. Um, I really don't consider them part of the day of seeding. Obviously, you're not going to do all this in one day. But the two steps that I did, if you do do this in one day, God bless you because it's a lot of work. Um, but the, the two steps steps that I did do was dethatch and airing. So I got out my Sunjo dethatcher. I dethatched pretty much my whole yard. I always make sure when I do a dethatching that I'm not getting out any good grass. So you want to make sure that you're getting out a you know the thatch in your lawn. And I noticed that a lot on video, you know, every year you see those dethatching videos of people dethatching their yards and everyone recommends to do it every year. But this year I wanted to make, I got, I wanted to do it just to see what I really got out. And I was actually surprised about what I got out of the lawn. And so we went over that uh, a couple of days before I went out and I rented an aerator at Home Depot. And after this year, I will probably never ever rent an aerator again. If you have ever rented an aerator yourself, and what I mean by renting an aerator, they, they generally have two brands or two different types at Home Depot. Um, they obviously, one's more, they call it a pro model, and the other one's the Clawson, I believe that's how you pronounce it. They're heavy machines. And if you are not comfortable with a big, heavy machine, then I do not recommend you guys rent one of these. Now, I have a truck, I have ramps, and uh, it was heavy. It was hard to get it up those ramps. Um, it was easy, I was, it's always easy to get equipment down the ramps, but whenever you wanna put on equipment up the ramps, it's always harder. So this is probably one of the last years that I will rent one of these. I'm gonna try and get somebody probably to do it for me next year if I can find somebody because people this they just people just don't like to work it seems like any anymore so hopefully i can find somebody in my area that can do it for me that has one of those um stingers uh aerators where you know they're they look they look like lawnmowers but they're actual aerators themselves because that aerator beat me up good thing with the aerator was is i was able to do my house and the project lawn in the same day i did get out a bunch of plugs both at my house and the project lawn which was great so hopefully that's going to help with the fall oversee process this year. I, last year I didn't do an aeration because I brought in a bunch of topsoil, tried to level off a bunch of spots. So this year I wanted to make sure I got an aeration done, but next year we are going to do something different. So I actually have one of my watering schedules going on right now. Uh, but first, let's go to the very first step, which is spreading the grass seed. So I just use a traditional Scott's mini edge guard spreader, nothing fancy. I just like putting my setting on a low setting between about a five and a six. And I just go over things twice if I have to. I make sure I do a coverage, an even coverage all the way around first. And then if I have anything left over, I go over again. But what I did this year was, is I did six pounds per 1,000. For the most part, my lawn this year, it was about 80 to 90% full when I went to go do my fall overseed. So I didn't want to do a heavy, heavy seed like I did last year, where I was doing nine to 10 pounds because there's pretty much bare dirt at that point last year. But this year I had a good coverage of, of an existing lawn. 
Um, so again, I did six pounds per 1,000, spread it out evenly. Now some of the uh, heavier spots that, uh, or some of the bare spots I should say that I had, obviously I went a little bit heavier in those spots. So as you can see right here, I had a trench that I did uh, earlier in the season. I put a sprinkler down at the end there of the fence down there. And then over here, I did a trench here as well to put another sprinkler head down there. Uh, our road, it, I know it looks really bad right now. We're getting it paved hopefully tomorrow. So that will be look really nice with this nice green grass here. But yes, I went heavier here. I just took a bunch of uh, grass seed and just basically sprinkled it out here. Uh, just, you know, you fling it down kind of sort of thing. And made sure that it was evenly spread. Um, and then obviously I put peat moss on there. That's another step. But first, after the seed, you want to fertilize. So today for my fertilizer, what I'm going to throw down is the 1825 made by Plant Specialty. I've been following their program this year and I saw really great results with both the granular and obviously their liquids as well. But today we're going to throw down one pound of N. That's the program that we're doing. One pound of N at the beginning of September on seeding and then another pound of N in early October. So that equates to about five and a half pounds per 1,000 square feet. So I'll measure everything out like I normally do, just like the grass seed, throw in my spreader and spread it out. So this year, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure I got good seed to soil contact because I was throwing seed into a fairly good existing lawn. So I wanted to make sure that, so that seed got down into the soil canopy. And, you know, I went out there this year, I rented a lawn roller, and if you've never used one of those before, it's a lot of work. Now, obviously they make them so that you can attach these to a tractor style lawnmower that has, you know, the hitch off on the back, or if you have a zero turn that has a hitch on the back as well, that's, it makes life a lot easier. We did this at the project lawn. After I got done doing my house, I went over to the project lawn and we, they have a tractor style lawnmower and we used it there and it was so much easier to use because it's a lot of weight. When you fill that drum up with water, it gets heavy and you know it, it, it's hard to move so that's what i did i rolled the lawn as best as i could to make sure that i got that seed down into the soil canopy to make sure i got the best seed to soil contact it, that i could and hopefully it works out and we'll see how the results are later this season after rolling the lawn now what i did was i went in and got my tenacity so tenacity obviously it's a good pre-emergent it's good for seeding i've never used it before at seeding so i'm curious to see how well it does if the grass seed germinates as quickly as i saw it last year so we'll see how that does for the remainder of the season but with tenacity the recommended rate when you do a seeding is a half a teaspoon per 1,000 square feet or per one gallon of water. So for a four gallon backpack sprayer, it's two teaspoons, obviously per four gallons. Mixed everything up and now I don't have any footage of it, of me spraying it, but it's a very simple process. If you're familiar with spraying any liquid fertilizer or herbicides, stuff like that, obviously you wanna wear the proper PPE. Uh, you know, obviously boots, you know, gloves, you know, sleeves, everything, mask. So please, if you're gonna do any kind of herbicide, pesticide, anything like that, please make sure you're wearing the correct PPE. So after spraying the tenacity, the next step that I did was is spread out peat moss. I pretty much spread a thin layer of peat moss in pretty much the whole yard. Uh, I used a different peat moss spreader this year, so this is the one that I use this year. So the peat moss spreader that I use this year is actually made by Easy Do. They sent this out to me before the fall overseed. There are a couple different changes with this as opposed to the Lancy peat moss spreader that I used last year. I still have that peat moss spreader, but I wanted to try this one out. There are definitely a couple of cons on this as well. I used this on the fall overseed that I did this year. I only use this one, but I will have a future video on comparing the two because I like to give everyone a full honest review on anything that I really do. Um, so I'm going to show this in a future video now in the bare areas of my lawn I went a little bit heavier of the peat moss just to make sure that that seed stays You know intact and it's not moving around a bunch I want to make sure those areas stay moist so we could see good germination in those areas Now obviously, you know, you don't always have to use a peat moss You could use a compost for me. It's just easy to use a peat moss I saw great results with peat moss last year. So I figured what the hell we'll try it again this year with the peat moss hopefully next year i won't have to use any peat moss and my lawn will be in a pretty good standing point i really want to get to the point hopefully next year where i really don't have to do a, a you know an overseed as you know if i have to and just feed the lawn 
in the fall time and just continue to see this lawn grow and, and that Kentucky bluegrass that is there to spread. So hopefully I can get to that point at some point, maybe hopefully next year. But we're the, it's fall, obviously 2022. So let's see our results for this year. So obviously the very last step to any fall overseas process is watering. Now, obviously I got one of my cycles going on right now. Right now I am doing four times a day at about 20 minutes a zone. And the reason why I'm do, I do so long for each zone, 20 minutes per zone, is because of the placement of my heads. I know that 20 minutes is gonna get me enough water to keep that soil moist. So obviously everyone's gonna be different. You could be only 10 minutes, but for me, I'm about 20 minutes a zone and I'm doing four times a day. I might bump that down because I'm seeing that I might be able to get away with three, but I'm gonna keep my eye on it. Like I said, we have a storm coming, so that's gonna help as well. But obviously the last step is watering. If you guys are gonna go through any kind of overseed process or a fall renovation process, please keep your grass seed watered. Keep the soil moist. I told the girls at the project lawn, please do me a favor, keep the grass watered. I could tell when I got there that day, it was very dry. And I could tell that they're they're not on a good you know watering schedule. I told them, please, do me a favor, keep the soil watered, keep the, the grass seed watered. You guys are gonna see really great results with the Mountain View seed. So hopefully they do what they I told them to do. I think they will. I, I kind of harped on them a little bit about it. So we'll see uh, you know, later in September into October what their lawn looks like as well. So that's it for my fall 2022 overseed process. Now everyone's overseed process or seeding process is gonna be a lot different or a little bit different or the same. Now there are a ton of videos out there that show you how to seed or overseed, but this is my process. It's a pretty similar process to what I did last year. I tweaked a couple things, a couple products that I felt that were just not necessary to use, a couple products that I thought I should have used last year that I did I used this year. Uh, one, one of them being the tenacity. So you know, I'm curious to see what you guys do at home. Is there anything that? I did that you do the same or if there's things that you do a little bit different leave it down in the comment section below and let me know what you guys do at home if you found today's content helpful or if you enjoyed today's content make sure you smash that like button it really does help out with the channel and if you're interested in any of my other content I'm available on Instagram I'm available on TikTok. go check me out there and please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so you can follow my process so we can see how my results are for this year. So again, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. <music>